we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Karen Higginbotham. I'll be the moderator for this event. This is our engineering and operations management lunch and learn webinar series. Uh, today's January 27th, 2021. So welcome. Um, I am the program manager in the MSOM department. Uh, if you could please save all questions until the end. Uh, we will ask you uh, to type them in the chat box at the end of the presentation. And this webinar, uh, for everyone's information, is being recorded and it will be posted on ScholarWorks at UARC in our Operations Management Collection of Presentations. So thank you all for joining us and let's get started. Uh, just a little bit about us. We are housed under the College of Engineering in the Industrial Engineering Department and Programs. We offer a Master of Science in Operations Management, Engineering Management, and Engineering. We also have three graduate certificates in Project Management, Lean Six Sigma, and Homeland Security. And I can't think of a better presenter to kick 2021 off in our webinar series. Uh, today, Dr. Carrie Beam is with us. Dr. Beam is a teaching associate professor for the Department of Industrial Engineering at the University of Arkansas. She holds a PhD in Industrial Engineering and Operations Research and has taught the Introductions to Operations Management, Intro to Decision Support Systems, Introduction to Analytics, Probability and Statistics, Lean Six Sigma, Maintenance and Reliability, Risk Management, and a variety of other operations management topics since she has begun with the program in 2012. She has been teaching online since 2007 and also works as a consultant specializing in data science and analytics. Projects include descriptive and predictive analytics and help inform such decisions as market segmentation, direct marketing strategy, customer churn analysis, and coupon pricing analysis. She is also the recipient of the 2016 MSOM Faculty Member of the Year Award. So Carrie, I'm gonna hand it over to you and uh, we look forward to your presentation. Thank you for being with us today. Fantastic, thank you so much, Karen. So delighted to see everybody here with us in the audience. I want to welcome you to our first of many fabulous webinars this year. Today, we are talking about better and faster, how to leverage award-winning operations management techniques. So what is operations management? It's like this question I get all the time, even at the grocery store. I like to think of it as the science of better. It's the intersection of engineering, analytics, and business. And it's the application of repeatable procedures, techniques, and quantitative methods to run businesses more effectively and efficiently. So this is not the research where you're having some new idea and you're trying to barely get it to work the first time. This is after somebody else has already gotten it to work the first time. We are looking at making it better. The next question you may have is, what is the Franz Edelman Award? I get asked this slightly less frequently at the grocery store, but the full it's basically a math problem competition for people in this field. Uh, the full title is the Franz Edelman Award for Achievement in Advanced Analytics, Operations Research, and Management Science. It's an annual competition. We have about 20 or so entries. They lead to six or seven finalists and one winner. In the past, contestants have included Intel, the Center for Disease Controls with Kid Risk for Polio Eradication, Amazon.com, IBM, Alibaba, Memorial Sloan Kettering, and many, many more. Uh, the Edelman has had $292 billion in cumulative benefits since its inception of, a few decades ago. Who was the 2018 Edelman, 2019 Edelman winner? It was the Louisville, Kentucky Metropolitan Sewer District with Tetra Tech. And you can see this is the award ceremony. You can see all these engineers here. And right there, you can see me. I was the coach of this team. So my, I had um, teenagers and they thought this was great that a mom was coaching the potty project. But I'll tell you more about that in a minute. I'm going to tell you this year, I am the chair of the 2021 Edelman Award, and I'm going to tell you how operations management and the Edelman Award come together and how our program helps support that. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is stakeholder engagement. Stakeholders have a need and they provide resources for a solution. And success depends on meeting the needs of your stakeholders. If your stakeholder is not happy, nobody's happy. And the Edelman competition rules specifically ask about stakeholder engagement. Let's talk about uh, one of our 
uh, contestants, the challenge was polio eradication. And for those of us in the age of COVID, this is kind of almost a prescient thing. The question is, can you use math to deal with polio? Maybe we can use it to deal with COVID watch and see. There's three strains of the polio disease, and it's not easy to detect. Not all cases lead to paralysis. There's some with very light symptom symptoms. There's two different types of vaccines, oral and injectable, and you can't vaccinate everybody fast enough, especially in a densely populated country like India, where you do sometimes have outbreaks. So the stakeholders on this thing, they were complex. They were global. It was the Center for Disease Control, the World Health Organization, UNICEF, local governments, vaccine manufacturers, healthcare workers, citizens, and the outcomes are both human health and economic. You could see this thing is just a crazy level of complexity. So good that it won the Edelman in 2014. It was the Center for Disease Control and Prevention with Kid Risk Incorporated. The short version of this is math plus vaccine is no more polio. The results of this project is that they found that speed is more important than coverage at the beginning of the outbreak. You are better off if you can only vaccinate half the people tomorrow than if you have to wait for enough um, levels of vaccines. Whoops, my slide went forward more than I wanted it to. And eradication, they found, is better than control. So for example, if we were just looking at, do we just want to vaccinate enough to keep it under control? No, we really want to get rid of it. The next thing in here is in the MSOM program, how can you deal with stakeholders? Well, we've got some classes. One of our classes is leadership principles, and we talk about how to consider all stakeholders when leading, not just those above you, but also those down um, on the ground. There's a class in organizing for change where we talk about how to bring all stakeholders on board. Change is hard and different people react to change differently. We have a project management class where we look at about communicating with project sponsors. We also have a strategic management class where we learn how to align with stakeholder strategy. So if you find yourself in our program, you will be given clear training in how to do how to most effectively engage stakeholders. The next thing that we're dealing with is iterative development. Uh, this is often called ready fire aim you get a small version of it working first. And then you wanna work with your stakeholders to verify your solution satisfies their strategic needs. And then you also wanna work with those on the front lines to verify that the solution is practical. And this is where we do continuous improvement. So you get a little version of it working first and then you move on and on and on. Iterative development happens in the Edelman. The challenge is optimal chip manufacture. And sadly, these are not potato chips. These are computer chips, the kinds that keep all your blinking lights going. It's too complicated if you're the manufacturer to make 100 chips for 100 different computer models. You know, maybe you can make 10. Each chip needs its own wafer fab setup and its own design. You can often upgrade a chip inside a computer, but you can't downgrade. If you sell somebody something with an i7, chip advertised, you can give them an i9 and they won't complain, but you can't give them an i5. And it's also really hard to predict demand three years out. Uh, for example, three years ago, they wouldn't have predicted there would be such a high demand for gaming chips um, due to COVID and shelter in place. And you got to get it manufactured and installed across global supply chains. And when I say global, I mean like over 100,000 employees and in 46 countries. So you might find yourself thinking, who does this? Well, the Edelman 2020 winner does this. It's Intel Corporation. They had $25 billion in savings and your laptop is now better because it has the right chip inside. What they did is they did planning architecture throughout the supply chain in their inventory. This is a slide from their YouTube talk. You can watch the whole YouTube talk down here. But basically down here is performance. This is a slow chip. This is a fast chip. And here is wafer utilization. This is you get a very few chips on your wafer. And this is you get a lot of chips on your wafer. So the best possible situation is way out here where you have a lot of really high performing chips on the wafer. Before they did this iterative development, they were only about here. They had a lot of them very densely packed, but they weren't very performing very well. They were able to use computers to generate a whole bunch of other solutions. And they were able to find this one over here where they packed them just slightly less densely, but they got a whole bunch better performance out of it. There's no way humans could have gone through all these dots out here and found the best one. Oh, I forgot. I was going to do the animations there. 
<laughs> All right. The next thing that we do in our MSOM program is you too can be like Intel. You too can learn to leverage iterative development. We have a Lean Six Sigma and an advanced Lean Six Sigma class. We go over the DMAIC, which stands for Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve, and Control. It's a very regimented process for making process improvements. And it talks about how to make incremental improvements in a measured way. There's a quality management class where we learn about reducing defects in goods and services. There's often a statement that says quality is free, variability is expensive. You'll learn what that means in this class and how to move more to the free end of things and less on the expensive end of things. And finally, decision models. This is a class that I teach. The textbook for it was written by our very own Greg Parnell, who chairs the department. In a decision model, often you're trying to make a decision, and these things can be big and complicated like Intel or slightly less complicated like what you might get at a single company. We talk about iterating until you come to an efficient frontier. So you go over lots of different ways to make the decision and lots of different outcomes until you come to the one that is the best for your particular situation. And again, once you get a couple of variables going, these things can be too complicated for a human to hold in their brain. You need something beyond a whiteboard. You need a computer to help with it. The next thing that we want to talk about is scaled up implementation. You want to deploy it across the organization to leverage benefits. One of the things we look at is can this technology be applied elsewhere to other companies or maybe other industries? The Edelman competition seats out large scale deployment of algorithms and transportable results. It's no good if a competitor has something that they did that only works for them in their industry and they won't share it with anybody else. So scaling up implementation, the challenge, this is probably going to sound familiar, wastewater is flooding the streets after a storm. You're a, rain, a waterfront city, you've got a river going through town. The rainfall is unpredictable, and it's really expensive to build new underground holding tanks to hold wastewater. But you can open and close your existing sewer gates to hold some water. And you can process some, but not all of your wastewater and release that safely. So the question is, can we manage smart instead of build big? When we say manage smart, can we open and close our existing sewers real time during a rainstorm in such a way that we don't need to have built this expensive underground holding thing and we're actually not going to flood the streets? And then in terms of scaling up, there are 800 other riverfront communities in the United States who also have this problem. If we can figure out how to do it for us, maybe that could be transportable. This is the Edelman 2019 winner. They used sensors in their sewers plus mathematical optimization to open and shut these sewers during a storm. The Louisville Metropolitan Sewer District had $200 million in savings, plus they had clean water. Um, over a decade, other riverfront cities have saved over a billion in avoidable infrastructure costs. Uh, so you can see these are some of the cities, Paris, Quebec, there's one in Wilmington, Delaware. They did not have to do a big dig underneath and build this big holding tank. Um, we had in the first year in Louisville, we had a thousand Olympic pools of sewage, which were not overflowed. We didn't need a big dig, now we can hold it. Another example of scaled up implementation is something hopefully a, a little a more routine in everybody's experience here. The challenge is to get the package to the customer on time. The package delivery varies. There's not every pack, not every day is the same. But what you got to do is you've got to assign a package to a driver, to a route, to a customer. And these things change all the time by weather and traffic. And the question is, can we drive smarter, save miles, but still deliver? Who wanted to do this? UPS, they were the 2016 winner of the Edelman. They decided to use GPS technology plus mathematical optimization to update their driver's routes throughout the day. They have 250 million addresses in their system. They had 55,000 drivers, 16 million packages, and 8 million customers every single day. They figured out a way to do this so that they could actually learn of a traffic event or learn of a new package pickup or drop off um, halfway through a day and adjust their drivers. 
So if you are in the MSOM program, you want to learn to scale up. What are some classes we offer that teach you how to do this way cool stuff? The first one is Introduction to Aided Data Analytics for Operations Managers. We teach you how to formulate things and how to make data-driven decisions. The next thing, you, know that you noticed in those previous two ones with the Louisville Sewer District and with UPS, we talked about mathematical optimization. People are always like, how exactly does that work? If you take the class called Principles of Operations Research, you learn how to set up constrained linear optimization problems so you can minimize costs subject to we deliver all of our packages or maximize capacity subject to we only have these many sewers we can open and close. Another class you could take is supply chain management. In this, you learn how to forecast things, you learn how to stock things, and you learn how to price things to get it all together. You could see whether you're trying to cope with rainfall or packages or any one of a number of other things. It's super useful to be able to upgrade your forecasting game. Whoops. So in summary, I'm just going to summarize these guys for you. The competitor was the Center for Disease Control and Kid Risk. If you remember only one thing about that, remember math plus vaccine equals no more polio. And the MSOM times is this is for many, many stakeholders. This is how to deal with many, many stakeholders. Intel, 25 billion in savings. The summary of this one is your computer is now better because it's got the right chips inside it. This is an example of iterative development, how to get something barely working at first and then move on and on and on. The next one we covered was the Louisville Metropolitan Sewer District in Tetric Tech, 200 million in savings and clean water. The summary for this one is now we can hold it. No more wastewater in the streets after a storm. This is a great example of scalable deployment. And our last one is UPS in 2016. They had 400 million in savings, plus 100,000 tons of carbon dioxide saved. It's environmentally friendly as well. The summary of this one is your package gets to customize best route all the time. That's another example of scalable deployment. Some of you are like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Where can I find the Edelman competition videos? You can go to YouTube, you can click on this link, or you could literally just run an internet search, type in YouTube Edelman competition, and it will bring those videos up. You could see the 2020 competition on the Informs website, and you can come join us online in April 2021 to see who wins this year's contest. And if you'd like to learn more about any of these classes, you can reach us at operations-management at uarc.edu. I'll turn it back over to you, Karen. Thank you, Carrie, very much. That was very informative. I think my favorite uh, one out of that is um, the UPS story. So maybe you can elaborate on that a little more. I found it fascinating when you were explaining it to me prior to this that it's actually more efficient to take three right turns than it is one left turn. So that to me is really a pretty cool deal. Okay, so we're gonna give you all a chance to kind of formulate some questions if you could start typing those in the chat box. But while you do that, we're gonna tell you a little bit more, um, a peek inside the MSOM program. Uh, we are 100% online. Uh, we do have live classes. However, that's been um, kind of, difficult during the pandemic, uh, but we are 100% online. Uh, there's in-state tuition for everyone, for domestic students, and uh, 10 graduate courses are included in the program, so that equals 30 hours. Um, up to four prerequisite classes may be required, but we would evaluate transcripts on an individual basis. We have five eight-week sessions per year in which you could start the program. You don't have to wait for the beginning of the semester. Pair of masters with a graduate certificate that I mentioned at the beginning, and I'll go over those briefly again. And there's no extra hours required when you do that. Currently, we don't have any GRE or GMAT um, required as long as you have a 3.0 bachelor's degree. The total program cost is anywhere between 12 and 15,000, depending on those prereqs that I mentioned that you would need. The graduate certificates, we have project management designed to provide skills to become better project managers and prepare for the PMP certification. We also have Lean Six Sigma, where you can learn how to eliminate problems, remove waste, and reduce variation to improve operations. We also have Homeland Security designed for industry and safety professionals to learn how to mitigate risk. 
for those graduate certificates. If you're not interested in pursuing a master's, you can earn this um, individually on your own. It's only four classes. Uh, again, you can either take this as part of your master's degree or independently. There is a 2.5 undergraduate GPA required for admission, no GRE or GMAT required. Those classes, again, will double count if you are in the MSM program or may be completed as a standalone program. There is an option to declare a certificate as a way to transition into the MSOM option uh, to avoid having to take the GRE. So for our COVID special announcement, effective for summer and fall 2021 terms, at this time we are waiving the GRE for all applicants with a 2.5 or above undergraduate GPA. Those applicants with above a 3.0 GPA are all automatically waived for any term. But once those GRE testing centers resume operations, the standard admission requirements will go back into full effect. So we're gonna have a question and answer with Carrie. And I've got a couple people starting here, but Carrie, why don't you start us off um, with what is the role of analytics in operations management? Great question. So analytics is loosely defined as what you get when you put data together with the right kind of question and the right kind of algorithms to get answers out of it. And analytics for operations management, you can use network algorithms to help you find the best path through a network of streets. You can use um, forecasting algorithms. So basically the role of analytics allows you to put hard numbers and run great what if projections against your proposed improvements. Great, thank you for that. Uh, our, the, our fearless leader, Dr. Greg Parnell is on with us and he's asking is the, um, uh, the iterative development another name for agile project management or is that something different? Oh, excellent question. It is something different. Agile project management refers to a whole philosophy, which includes a scrum master and meeting and everybody has to do um, certain things and, and certain orders. If you're in an agile project environment, you'll know it. Iterative development literally just means we're going to do the little thing first, and then we're going to make it bigger and bigger. You can be both agile and iterative. Um, you can also be iterative, but not agile. Great, thank you for that. And we've got a participant on that wants to know how a combination of MSOM, five years of quality manager experience and a scrum master certification, how would that help in one's career, Carrie? Do you have any thoughts on that? Oh my gosh, that is going to be like fire for recruiting managers. I'm looking at this and I'm like, wow, I wish I had those qualifications. Um, so you know, the quality manager experience is going to be very helpful in terms of identifying what the customer wants and reducing defects. And the scrum, if you're a scrum master, you know how to get things done. Uh, the MSOM program will give you a broad background in what kinds of things to do and what kind of tools you can apply. So I think those three things would go together really well as a career track. Great. I hope that answers your question there. We've got another one. Um, let's see, they're coming in too fast for me here. It says, how can we extrapolate qualitative and quantitative and MSOM analytics, which courses will help? Let's see, I'm not quite sure I understand the question. It yeah. sounds like the question is that there's some qualitative things in the MSOM program, like leadership and change management, and some quantitative things like decision support, and um, analytics. And the question is, how can we tell the difference between what's a quantitative and what's a qualitative class? Maybe. If that is the question, there's two ways to do it. The easy, well, the easy way is to read the course description online. The course descriptions will typically in, let you know whether it's going to be a qualitative or a quantitative class. And then the other way to do it is you could email the instructor or any one of our admissions advisors and just ask how much quantitative is in, for example, the quality management class. Um, something like a risk management class or a probability and statistics class, you might reasonably assume there's a lot of quant in there. Um, but definitely you can ask and we'd love to talk to people. Yeah, um, you know, that's kind of a follow up question. Um, you know, the one thing that surprises many students about operations management, um, you know, what do you think is the one thing that surprises them the most when they come in? Because operations management, that term can be very um, intimidating to some folks. I think the thing that surprises people the most about operations management. So there's a small one and a big one. The big one is that all these things that look like magic 
are not magic. They're actually operations management. For example, the UPS guy magically shows up with your package or Amazon magically knows that you bought this last week. So now you want to buy that. The UPS guy didn't just magically get here. He followed an algorithmically determined route with really good information. And Amazon didn't just magically decide you wanted to buy this pink thing because you bought that blue thing last week. They used an algorithm that we also have our students do in our analytics class to determine that. So you kind of learn how to peek under the hood and learn um, what's happening. And then um, the small surprise is so many of our graduates take a decision support tools class, which is essentially an introduction to Excel for operations managers. And we have people coming in saying, gosh, I've used Excel for 20 years. I didn't have 20 years worth of experience in Excel. I had one year of experience repeated 20 times. And with this class, now when I have a spreadsheet at work, the spreadsheet obeys me. And people say that again and again and again. And it's a little bit of a surprise because it's an early class and it's a prerequisite class and sometimes people wave out of it. But I think one of their biggest surprises is how useful that fluency in Excel can be. Good. And those of us that are still with us, um, we'll give you a little bit more time to uh, formulate any questions and, and ask those in the chat box. Um, Meanwhile, Carrie, you know, uh, we are a non-thesis program, everyone, and we have a comprehensive exam that is um, a two-part uh, presentation video and then an oral interview. And Dr. Beam here is on that committee. And, you know, Dr. Beam, what do you think um, when you listen to all these folks that finish the program and they're going back out into the world and, and continuing on professionally or maybe advancing in their careers because of the master's um, in operations management program, what are the most professionally useful skills gained in the MSOM program that you that you hear from our, our students? We hear people saying again and again a couple of things. One of them is I can now do Excel, which is great. Um, it's not the aim of our program, but it's super great that people learn that. Something else that I learn people, I hear people say over and over again is I am now thinking in terms of processes instead of one-time happenings. So for example, I'm at work and we run out of an important supply. I no longer just think we need to go get more of that today. I fought that fire, now I'm gonna go deal with something. I'm now able to think about it from a systems perspective of what is our inventory ordering system? What is our forecasting system? Why did we run out and how can I prevent future stockouts like that? So it is the ability to think like a system scientist. Okay, thank you so much for that. Um... So oh, we have a great, uh, we've got one from John in the chat. Karen, would you read that one out from John? I sure will. Um, he, John uh, comes to us and says, as an MSOM alumni, I appreciated the balance of courses like leadership and ethics with courses with more analytical focus like project management and supply chain management. So there is a, a unsolicited testimonial to what we've been talking about. Thanks, John. And we're so happy that you were able to join us today. Uh, Madison's got a question that says, how is OM, operations management, a benefit to those in a supply chain field from a is that supply chain management background? Uh -huh. Oh, the, the short answer is yes. I can elaborate on that a little bit more. Uh, if you've got a background in supply chain, you're probably pretty familiar with things like inventory stocking, forecasting methods, um, risk analysis and ba backup. And you may really benefit from some of the more qualitative classes we have, like stakeholder management, communication, um, leadership, change management. Those kinds of items can really help a supply chain manager not only recognize what needs to be done, but actually get those changes driven and implemented across an organization-wide basis. Great, Madison, I hope that answered your question. If, if you want any further clarification, please feel free to, to type uh, any more questions in the chat box. Thanks for joining us today. And we've got a question that says, so can I switch back and forth with the certificate to MSOM if I heard you right? Um, I'm not sure um, if you mean so if, when you're taking classes that go towards a certificate, if you are in the MSO on program, they will double count. They will count for both. Um, and so you would still remain an active student if you were declared a Master of Science and Operations Management student. You would also be declared as a project management certificate. So whether what type of course you wouldn't be switching back and forth, you would just remain active. So I think I'm answering that question correctly. So any more questions for Carrie about the the 
uh, Edelman Award or, or her. Um, Carrie, do you want to just tell the folks a little bit about um, about your role maybe on the committee this year? Is just, Are you chair or co-chair? Yeah, no, I am the chair. It's kind of terrifying because, you know, I look around and I'm like, oh my gosh, who's got to make all this happen? And then it's like, oh, that person is me. <laughs> but no, I'm delighted to be chairing the competition. We've got seven really great competitors and um, looking forward to a great, um, a great outcome. But Karen, something else that I sometimes get asked about is what is the comprehensive exam like? Would it be helpful to speak a little bit to that? Absolutely, Carrie. Please. Yeah. So if you're a student in our program, in the MSOM program, you've typically spent about two years taking, um, taking your classes, and then you're coming to the end of it for your comprehensive exam. You need to review your classes. You do a 10-minute video presentation that your committee reviews, and then you come and you show up for 20 minutes. And as a committee, we ask questions, um, like a very common question would be, there are 10 operations management decisions that we study in our intro class, and they are, include things like design of goods and services, quality management, um, you know, location strategy, those kinds of things. And you'd be asked, pick one or two of those 10 OM decisions and tell us how they apply to your current job. So we really want you to be able to think not just, oh, this is a transportation application, but oh, I am working at a trucking company. Maybe we could route our drivers a little bit better. Or even, you know, I am working at a university. Maybe the same algorithms that UPS uses to schedule its drivers to its trucks, maybe we could use that to assign professors to classrooms. That's a very good point. Yeah, it's really, um, I think um, it's important for people to understand that, you know, operations management um, means so much more than what people think it means. And it can be applied to literally, I think, um, across disciplines, uh, whether it be healthcare, supply chain, logistics, um, you know, and right now we're going to be watching the biggest um, supply chain experiment of the all with, with the vaccine. So um, that'll be interesting to watch. And so those types of skills and knowledge will really help folks understand what's what's gone on this past year and and what may be our new normal so well absolutely I yeah can so, i ask one can i ask one other question of everybody i was going to say we've got one got a few more minutes uh this was a short presentation but we wanted to allow some time for folks to to ask any questions yeah. you may have um but My question for everybody is if you could put something in the chat with something that you either learned or something that surprised you from today's talk, I would love to hear it. Oh, that's great. I like that. I haven't done that before. Could be polling folks, but so John says he hadn't heard of this award before, so that's great. And they liked aim and fire, Carrie. That yes, ready, fire, aim. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd love to know if folks are are you know in the program and what you're learning is is helping you in your current position or if you're not in our program yet and thinking about it you know what what direction you think that this could take you um science of better for om is new and i love it I'm gonna spread the word thank you akila and this would be an inside joke to some of us, but the, the iterative development, now we understand how our fearless leader's brain works. That's, that's very true, Carol. Thank you for that. <laughs> we love him dearly. <laughs> Thanks, Marge, for being with us today. Everyone, Marge Pash is um, one of our site coordinators out of Memphis, Tennessee, um, who many of you have maybe as an advisor already if you're a current student or um, might be. Uh, assigned to, especially if you're military, she takes care of very good care of several branches of our, of our military students, which we have a lot of. So thanks, Marge, for for all your hard work. Um, John Calhoun says he's already enrolled in the program, so it was good to hear some practical applications uh, for some of the courses, like decision models and analytics, etc. So great, John. Thanks for that note. We appreciate you being here and and glad that you're in the program. So we'll give folks a few more minutes to wrap it up and. Um, Ashley uh, is new to our program. Um, she was actually our scholarship uh, award recipient uh, for the fall semester. We enjoyed le learning from her story, which is on our social media. We are on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Uh, but Ashley says that she's in the program and enjoying it. 
Uh, the things that I've learned have helped me build my business acumen and been able to apply some of the things I've learned in my current role. Um, and Professor Beam, um, shout out for teaching and being the Excel whiz for all of our students. I hear that a lot. Yay. <laughs> and Eric um, is also, I believe, new. Pardon me, Eric, if you're not, but I've got four Williams people, so I might be mixing y'all up. But um, he says, I think the discussion of the different courses was interesting and it increased his interest in uh, the research class. So that's great. Um, and Carol, who is our um, assistant director in the MSM program, uh, wants to add that, you know, to think in terms of processes and not just activities. So that's a good point as well, Carol. So Carrie, I really want to appreciate your time. Uh, Carrie's joining us from the San Francisco Bay Area. So um, we appreciate you spending your morning with us and, and, and prepping for the presentation. And we wish you the best of luck uh, chairing the committee this year and look forward to any updates you might have. Um, just so everyone is aware that um, since you registered um, for the webinar, you will be receiving a follow-up email with a lot of information, uh, links and everything else. Uh, but I want to get to our next webinar. It's going to be Wednesday, February the 10th at around the same time at noon central. Um, it's on Agile Project Management and Innovative Technology Development by our newest addition, uh, full-time professor, Dr. Rocky Gay. And uh, um, We want to thank you all for attending. Uh, you will be receiving registration emails now that you have attended one of our webinars. And uh, it will be to register for our upcoming next webinar. So about um, if anybody has any information uh, about our flex, you know, flexible degree options, um, you can email me um, at uh, kahicken at uark.edu. You can also visit our operations-management.uark.edu. We've got a request more info button there. Um, again, registered participants are going to receive the, uh, an email with links to this webinar and a PDF of the presentation. And we wanna thank everybody for um, attending and we look forward to seeing you online next month. Thank you everyone, have a good day.